It is with such great pleasure that I introduce Her Royal Highness, uh, Crown Princess Victoria. She is not only, if that is not enough, a Crown Princess of Sweden, she is also a strong advocate for the SDGs, and we are extremely pleased that you have taken on this role to really push Agenda 2030 forward. So give her a warm applaud. The floor is yours. Minister, Excellencies, Mayors, Ladies and Gentlemen. A while ago, I came across an old poem. It was written in 1858 by a young man called Oscar Frederick. He was also known by another name, Prince Oscar of Sweden, and later the King Oscar II. He was my father's great-great-grandfather. And the poem was called Östersjön, the Baltic. I would actually like to read you the first verse. Du blånande hav som mångtusenden år mot Skandiens klippor har slagit. Som brutit din boja var gryende vår och frigjord i fjärran har dragit. Dig ägnas min sång, ty jag längtar dit ut när böljorna slå emot skären. For those of you who don't speak Swedish, a free English translation would sound something like this. O distant blue sea that for thousands of years has broken against northern shores, crashing free every spring to claim freedom that ever is yours. I sing you my song, for I long to be there as the waves break onto the rocks. Almost 160 years have passed since the poem was written. But my ancestors' words still ring true as they describe the beauty and the power of the Baltic Sea. But as we all know, much has changed, and that is why we are all here today. And that is also why I, in my role as advocate, for the UN Sustainable Development Goals, have taken, uh, has uh, chosen to focus on issues such as water and health. The Baltic has a very special place in my heart. It is an integral part of my heritage. One underlying theme in Prince Oscar's poem is the dangers of the sea, the threat that it poses to man. He writes of a sailor fighting for his life against the raging dark waters. Today, the tables have changed. Now, man is the danger to the sea, filling it with plastic, poisoning the fish, and suffocating the seabeds. The facts are only too well known. Every year, 40 tons of microplastics from personal care products are released out into the sea. In Sweden, children and women of childbearing age are advised to limit their consumption of fat fish from the Baltic Sea to no more than two or three times a year. The Baltic Sea is also home to seven of the world's 10 largest marine dead zones. All the while, coastal erosion is eating away at the shores along the Baltic, the damage being speeded up by the effects of climate change. 
Throughout history, the Baltic Sea has often been a battleground. Nations have gone to war against each other. Today, we are fighting a different kind of battle. Countries along the Baltic shores are joining forces, working together across the sea that unites us. This Congress is an excellent example of this, with decision makers, researchers, entrepreneurs, and investors all coming together to find new ways forward, coming forward for a sustainable development in the Baltic region. There's no doubt that humans and our way of life are a hazard to the Baltic Sea. But we are also the ones that are able and capable of saving it with collaboration, commitment, and innovation. I would like to thank all of you for being here and for generously sharing your valuable knowledge and best practices. I want to urge you, every one of you in this room, to please make the most out of this opportunity and use your, wise, your time wisely. Because when it comes to the future of the Baltic Sea, there is no time to be wasted. For many generations, we have depended on the sea for our livelihood and for our survival. Now, the survival of the sea depends on us. This is critical, not only to our environment, but also to our economic and social development. There is a win-win potential in this. A healthy sea allows for new jobs to be created. And with a growing global demand for in innovative uh, in environmental solutions, there are great opportunities to export our knowledge and expertise. So let us take our responsibility and grasp these opportunities for blue growth by taking action. Thank you. Thank you, your royal highnesses, excellencies, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. For thousands of years, the Baltic Sea had united the people living along its shores. It provides us food, ways of transport, recreation and trade. It has been and still is essential to us all. It is difficult not to say impossible to imagine pre prosperous cities like Stockholm, Helsinki, Riga, Tallinn or Gdansk without their access to the waterways the Baltic Sea provides. The last century we have developed so fast. The way of living we enjoy today would have been impossible to imagine a hundred years ago. But this rate of development had also come to a cost. You are all aware of the impact of industrialization and urbanization. They have given us the modern world, but also new challenges and threats. On the global scale, we face the huge task of climate change. Rising water levels are just one of the expected results of this man-made change. This alone is a danger that threatens all our cities. The over-fertilization of the Baltic Sea threatens living and healthy water. 
Many of the spaces with who we share the Baltic Sea are on the brink of extinction. Some are already extinct. Consequently, we need to eradicate chemical contamination and plastic waste. We live in an age, age of knowledge. We are aware of the changes to the environment that we have caused. And we have the possibility to act with the strength of the modern society. This is what the conference of the Baltic Sea future is all about. How we do the best employ our knowledge and skills to change the future of the Baltic Sea to something bright, an example to other regions facing similar challenges around the world. Good water governance is a precondition for achieving sustained, inclusive and sustainable growth. Let me elaborate on that. Water has for a long time been one of the key factors in Stockholm's policy making. The waterways have been our connection to the outside world. It's been the basis for our industrialization and growth. And today, the beauty of a city being on water is what attracts thousands of visitors to our city. We are fortunate in our close relation to water. In Sweden and Stockholm, we have an abundant supply of fresh water. And we do enjoy the results of forward-thinking decision-makers in the past who led our town towards sustainable water management. However, we did not always have good water management. The city of Stockholm was founded in the 13th century. Since then, it has grown from a small country town to a large metropolis. The water surrounding our city has always been a vital importance to the everyday life in Stockholm. But when the number of inhabitants began to grow, the water quality got worse. Lake Mälaren was called the dirty ditch during the 50s. The water was heavily polluted with wastewater. At that time, you could not swim anywhere in the city. And now, the water is so clean that we even draw our drinking water from Lake Mälaren. It is in fact rated amongst the best in the world. Change can be made. Investments in wastewater infrastructure and environmental protection have improved the water and quality of life of our inhabitants. And at a time when the city is growing fast, we need to go on safeguarding the water supply. Therefore, we will continue to invest in resilient water solutions. Our water is, and the wise decision makers and decision makers is something to be very proud about. But even now, if we perhaps tend to brag about our water, we still face very serious challenges. There is still a lot to do to improve the ecological and chemical status of lakes and waterways in Stockholm. As I said, the Baltic Sea is threatened by extensive overfertilization. As always, with water resources, the solution to this and the only possible way to save the Baltic Sea is extensive national and international and cooperation between cities. The city of Stockholm has taken an active role in the struggle for sustainable environment for many decades now.
Stockholm is a good example of consensus-based policy making. A sustainable environment has been one of the city's top priorities for the last 20 years. To manage climate change and the environmental threats we are facing as a city and a part of the global community, we have, during my leadership, adopted a new environmental program, a new storm weather program, and a, a new action plan for good water status. And we have also set the ambitious goals that Stockholm should be fossil fuel free by 2040. To reach all these goals, the city must excel in all aspects, and we need to cooperate. That's why we meet here today. The Baltic Sea is host to 1,500 cities. Major cities are a reflection of the global society as a whole. And cities will play an ever more important role in bringing about the solutions of tomorrow. More than half of the world's population today lives in cities. But cities are not only the place where people live and work. Today, cities are where the political will is found. In a time where na nations redefine themselves, city leaders don't have that luxury. We have to provide working solutions immediately. Social unrest, pollution, and making room for more people is on our agenda every day. In this time of transition, Stockholm is working with cities around the world to be a part of the solutions of tomorrow. We set ambitious goals, and, and they are hard to reach, but we are certain that bringing about solutions also bring about prosperity with wealth and employment in its path. This is something we want to develop and share to the benefit of us all. And even if the Baltic three Sea is threatened today, the solution we can provide will beneficially of us all. Thank you all for attending to this conference and very welcome to Stockholm. Thank you. So our next honorable speaker is the vice chancellor of Stockholm University. And it's an honor to have um, Astrid Söderberg Widing here to tell us all about the Stockholm University engagement in this conference. Please give it a warm hand. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, Minister, Mayors, dear friends of the Baltic Sea. On behalf of Stockholm University, one of the three parties behind the Baltic Sea Future Initiative, together with Stockholm City and the Sustainable Seas Foundation, it is an honor and a great pleasure for me today to welcome you all to Stockholm. I think it's great that we have come together, gathered for the first time, but not, certainly not the last, uh, at this Baltic Sea Future Congress in order to find new solutions for the future for the Baltic Sea, this vital common interest that we all share. Dialogue and cooperation between countries surrounding the Baltic Sea, as well as between different stakeholders, municipalities and investors, researchers and entrepreneurs, is really necessary, absolutely crucial to move forward and to both address and solve the many complex challenges that we have to face today. Why does the university take part in such an initiative? For Stockholm University, Baltic Sea future, of course, means new 
opportunities to transmit our scientific knowledge to different operators in the region. But for us, it is equally important to take part in the rapid knowledge development that we see today within the practical work devoted to finding solutions, and thus to be inspired to new research questions and new collaborations, to do more adequate research in order to solve the pressing problems that are at, are at stake for the Baltic Sea future. When Stockholm University was founded in 1878, it was in order to create a new university for the capital of Sweden to do strong basic research, first of all in science, but soon enough also in human and social sciences, and to cooperate with the surrounding society, and in particular with the city of Stockholm. The Baltic Sea Future Initiative is well in line with this historical heritage. This is indeed, I believe, one of the most important and best ways to carry on this tradition and develop it into the future, as the Baltic Sea is really our common concern. Ever since its start, Stockholm University has been engaged in cooperation with a society of different kinds, and we consider it vital both for our education and our research, it enhances the use of scientific knowledge and gives the researchers better insights into societal challenges and thus also helps them in shaping better questions for applied research. Stockholm University generally has a very strong profile in environmental research. Among our profile areas of research are climate, seas and environment, as well as economy and environment. Last year, we were ranked in the Shanghai ranking as number five in the world in environmental research, and in the Times Higher Education ranking as number three in the world in driving environmental awareness. This, of course, uh, is a challenge, and our contribution to this initiative is part of fulfilling and developing this high ambition. Many of our environmental researchers from all areas or fields of research have a strong commitment not only to research as such, but also to contribute to realize the sustainable development goals and create a sustainable development for our planet and our societies, not least in relation to the Baltic Sea. And in this we also cooperate closely with the Stockholm Environment Institute. Since its start already in the 1960s, research on the Baltic Sea at Stockholm University has been characterized by its strong interdisciplinarity and its strive to contribute to concrete solutions for environmental problems in relation to the Baltic Sea. Concerning several of the grand challenges related to the Baltic Sea, Stockholm University provides strong research across disciplines and faculties, and of course, we also collaborate actively with other universities, both around the Baltic Sea and across the globe. For example, the so-called Baltic Bridge Initiative, together with University of Helsinki, was launched the other week. And when the Baltic countries in 2007 agreed upon a common action plan for the Baltic Sea, the scientific basis concerning the issue of over-fertilization was provided by Stockholm University. We actually already have several answers, and we also know several of the questions that we still have to explore and find out about. But this is only the beginning. Because in order to realize our common goals, the concrete measures have to be realized on the local level. The aim of Baltic Sea Future is precisely this, to be an arena where experiences may be shared, as well as good examples on the local level. By sharing knowledge on different approaches and increase dialogue between different operators, we may also increase the level of engagement across different sectors of society, within the universities, but most of all with other stakeholders. We indeed need innovations, visions, and leadership for a sustainable Baltic Sea region, as is stated in the program for this Congress. The vision of Stockholm University is that Baltic Sea future shall contribute to further contacts between science, 
local policymakers and business, and that we will thus all be inspired and motivated to increase our collaboration concerning the Baltic Sea. What is called for is action rather than talk, an action plan that is efficient and sustainable, able to provide a foundation for sustainable societal development. But in order to take adequate action, we still need to talk. And we need to talk to each other across the dividing lines that all too often separates us in everyday life, across the borders of our countries, across different sectors of society, politics, business, science. Hence, the vital need for this gathering. Within Stockholm University, the Baltic Sea Center devoted both to research and to analysis, synthesis, and communication, and with generous funding from the Baltic Sea 2020 Foundation, has provided much of the research basis for this meeting. Their area of research and communications contains both contaminants and microplastics, effects of fisheries, eutrophication and habitats, and biodiversity. Some of the scientists within this broad research initiative will also participate in this meeting. But if you want to further dialogue on any particular issue, you're of course always welcome to contact our researchers. Let me also thank all the partners who have made this event possible today, and in particular uh, our partners, the City of Stockholm and uh, the Sustainable Seas Foundation. But for now, most importantly, once again, let me wish you most welcome to this networking conference. I hope that our exchanges today and tomorrow will be both enjoyable and efficient. And above all, I'm convinced that they will be of great benefit for the Baltic Sea future. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, and um, being an employee of Stockholm University, this makes my heart sort of thump a little faster. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I know that you know the university talks a lot about cooperation. You know, how do you get to this really? What do you see as bottlenecks? How can we take one step further? You mentioned the Congress here, of course, but yes. do you see other issues that's more essential? What will be the next step? to get to this action-oriented cooperative? Well, I think there are several initiatives which are all important. I also mentioned this Baltic Bridge, which is a yes. Finnish-Swedish yes. cooperation, mm -hmm. uh, with the same aim as this Congress, to make people talk to each other across uh, countries and across these different sectors of society. And I believe that the dialogue on those very concrete issues is absolutely vital. Yeah, and then gathering, of course, as we're trying here, different yes. stakeholders. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to echo Gun also. I am also quite excited because you're also on our board, Astrid. Yes. <laughs> so we feel very, very pleased about that as well. Maybe building a little bit on the same question. Uh, on the one hand, we are talking today about the positive collaboration we have in the Baltic Sea, among cities, among, among countries, among scientists and so on. But at the same time, we read in, in newspapers all the time about the security situation is getting worse and, and so on, and in particular also in the Baltic Sea region. Do you think that science can also become even more of a trigger for peaceful collaboration and, and somehow counterbalance what appears to be political uh, lock-ins? That I certainly hope. Uh, science has always been international or global, even global. So I think that this is a real important mission for our universities and for academia today, is to provide this kind of answers and solutions and do so uh, regardless of political climate and tensions. Mm. So can, can you see, uh, if, if you're looking at the last couple of years, can you see that it's more difficult today to collaborate among some of the countries in the Baltic Sea region? Or do you think that science is still pushing the agenda forward? Yeah, I do think so, really. Yeah. Yes. So we will well, have also a gift. Or do you yes, have uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, oh, and of course, uh, the little gift comes here from you, Juan. So. The boat. Oh, thank you. And the trip. Fantastic. Yes. Thanks. You see, it's not Thanks. bad. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Congress has, as you heard, uh, three major founders. Uh, and now we're going to meet Mrs. Lena Ek, 
who is, uh, well, you have lots of roles actually, but from this perspective, you are a senior advisor to the Baltic Sea F Foundation. Who has? Please welcome. Thank and you. Uh, Mrs. Eek, she has a long background in politics from the Centre Party. She is a former Minister of, Minister of Environment. You've been a member of the European Parliament. And today you're also the chairman of Södra, which is the largest Swedish forest owner association. Mm -hmm. Please, Lena. Thank you. It's amazing to be called senior advisor. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Your Royal Highness, um, Minister, Madam Mayor, and Vice-Chancellor, Excellencies, distinguished delegates and friends, and the fantastic group of people who organized this historic event. The Baltic Sea is part of all our lives. It's part of our common history and of our memories. It's also part of our daily lives and our future and of our dreams. We all want to enjoy its possibilities and its positive power. But despite this, for days, months, years and decades, we have used the Baltic Sea without thinking of the consequences. It has helped us with human relations and trade, but we pollute it with oil and grey water and invasive species. The Baltic Sea has provided food, and survival, and we have been overfishing, underpreserving, and destroying the living conditions for fish, birds, mussels, and also animals, and eelgrass, and seaweed, and so on. The Baltic Sea and its waters are part of our dreams, freedom, health, companionship, vacation, and laughter. But what do you tell your children when you take them for a promised picnic and swimming and the water surface is covered with a grey-green layer about a decimeter thick? Or the waters look like a rhubarb soup and you have to tell them that uh, in this phase the green algae are blooming makes the water poisonous. And please, kids, keep the little dog away from the water. Our common future, but also our common responsibility, is why the Sustainable Seas Foundation was created. It started with a fantastic sailing ship, Briggen Tre Kronor, that was built and created to show the Baltic Sea and its possibilities, but also its very poor environmental situ situation. Very soon people involved realized that more fundamental changes was needed. And long story short, today there is a board of trustees from different parts of society, companies and leaders taking on the challenge. And therefore today we have all gathered here to discuss challenges and possible solutions. All around the Bal Baltic Sea municipalities are struggling to cope with this situation. Citizens are demanding change. Researchers are working hard to find solutions. Com companies want to find new technology to master the challenges of combining jobs and sustainable growth. And local leaders are under pressure to accommodate all those pressing needs and furthermore to finance it. Therefore, dear friends, it's a joy to see all of you here Finally, we have an open platform to discuss how we can solve some of the problems by working locally and regionally. There are numbers of good examples demonstrated in the seminars and exhibitions. Researchers can meet decision makers. Finance can discuss projects with municipalities and companies. And farmers can show the way forward. And we can all learn about hazardous substances. All of you can experience the Baltic cooperation that is already here and that can be used. New knowledge on how climate change affects our region will be demonstrated. An innovative and visionary leadership will take the lead. And finally, innovation and sustainable financing will demonstrate that change is possible. 
I used to be a part-time mayor in the small, the very small municipality of Valdemarsvik on the east coast of Sweden. I still live there. Since then I worked in the parliament, the European parliament, and I met some of you when I was a minister for environment. I know that these problems are complicated and difficult to grasp and much more difficult to solve. Therefore, we need to meet and we need to work together. And dear friends, some phenomenon, phenomenon may, really makes me wonder. <sighs> we know that new kind of heavy rain will appear due to climate change. And still we put hardcover asphalt on the ground in our villages and still we design slopes that will gather the water in a way that we know will cause an overflow in our drains and sewer systems. Instead we can use forests to balance water flows. We know that birds and fish gather and breed on the banks south of Gotland. But we create waterways that brings 50,000 ships through this very area yearly. We know that particles and emissions from heavy fossil fuels cause a lot of respiratory and heart problems to great cost for individuals, but also for health systems and societies and of course for the environment. And still we allow these fuels in harbors in city centers are uh, in buses, even outside hospitals that treat these very ailments. We see that seaweed and eelgrass is disappearing, and we know that this is basic food for some of our, the species that many of us are depending on for our food and daily survival. And lately, have you reflected on microplastics? What they cause? and where they come from. The kind of plastic we use, we mostly use, never disappears. It's not biodegradable. Whales have been stranding on the German coast and also on the Norwegian coast. And when they were subject to autopsy, researchers found plastic garbage in their internal systems. They also found, and even more, so microplastics small fragments with a surface covered with li lipophilic contaminants like PCB and dioxins. Think about it. 75% of world's textiles are based on oil. 75%. We use plastic bags, toys, containers, etc. all the time. And we have never thought of the consequences. If the water filtering organisms fills with this, where will we as human beings end up? Here, municipalities can make a world of change. Public procurement is one of the strongest tools we have at our disposal. And then add knowledge, information, regulation, etc. I personally think that microplastics can be a problem of the same size as mercury, ozone layer and climate. But to the end, and to end on a positive note, we have new technology, we have knowledge, we have possibilities, and we already have international agreements on mercury, on ozone layer and on climate. So let's also take on the problem of microplastics. And we can start on a new note. United Nations last year did not only succeed in an agreement on climate, but also on sustainable development goals. They are based on the three cornerstones of economic development. We know that we need this. Social responsibility, extremely important, and environmental considerations. And in between these three cornerstones are we. And we can take actions. Um, this is how municipalities and cities think. Co economics, human beings, environment. And this is how municipalities and cities work. And that gives this conference extra strength and extra impetus 
So, dear friends, have a really fantastic conference, full of work and new ideas and solutions. And on behalf of the fabulous team of organizers, and if I may, Stockholm City, Stockholm University, and of course the Sustainable Seas Foundation, and all the marvelous partners, welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Eke. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can't sort of resist going back to policy issues. You know, this is my favorite area. I, and I, I know that I you, that. with you, uh, <laughs> long background in policy. And of course, we'll be talking a lot more about policy also in the next session. But mm. just to sort of, you know, it keeps popping up in my head. Are we doing enough? I mean, we know that this is a difficult area. And how do we get through when, you know, we have science telling us the environmental situation is difficult. But why doesn't anything happen? Why is it so slow? Uh, well, why do, still, why do people still smoke? <laughs> <laughs> we know all the dangers, we know its environmental effects and so on. Um, I think it's, it's a lot about psychology. Uh, and psychology is also leadership. And uh, you all have to have the first group of people realizing that here is something dangerous, uh, we have to act, and they act. That is about five, six, seven percent of the population, generally. And then you have a slightly bigger group. Let's say, oh, here is something uh, dangerous, or we have to do something, and they have already started. I don't want to be the last one. And when the second group, that is about 12, 14 percent of the population, when the second group start acting, then everyone follows like a bandwagon effect, effect. And that is why conferences like this are so extremely important to mobilize. I mean, you are all probably the first group, but to mobilize the second group mm -hmm. and to bring uh, the society with you and take action. Yep. There are solutions. And, and being a mayor in a small municipality with very little money to spend, you have to be so cautious on what you do, but to act uh, in a preparatory way and, and, and try to um, not wait till the costs are getting bigger and bigger. That is one very, I think, smart advice for mayors. Yeah, the importance here of you have friends forerunners. to rely on. Yeah. yeah, as you said, the importance of forerunners and good examples. And we'll yes. have plenty of that. And tomorrow morning, we'll also talk about the psychology of changing. But that's a get back to and, that. And uh, as we discussed with, with your Royal Highness, uh, you go to a conference and you're full of, of knowledge and, and spirit and you want to do something and then it's, it's tough when you come home mm -hmm. and you have to take on the daily, uh, all the daily work again. But then we will have a new conference next year. <laughs> <laughs> so keep up the good spirit. We will meet again and we will continue to help each other with saving the Baltic Sea. Maybe just a small question. We will have the uh, pleasure to listen to our current uh, Minister for the Environment yes. uh, soon, Karina Skog. Uh, but we also know that when, when you leave politics, uh, maybe you become a little bit more open about challenges. I mean, <laughs> you have to, of course, she, has, she still has to manage, <laughs> navigate you know, the politics. But you, Lena, you have left the politics. Yes. So when you were environment minister, you had the same passion, I know that. Um, you wanted to change, you wanted and to I push things. I think my colleagues, th colleagues thought I was pretty open. By I, <laughs> I know, yeah, you were pretty open. Can, but can you say, maybe can I give you some insight? What, what are the barriers in politics to really trigger the change that we need in the Baltic, because there are big things you're asking for, but so we have a lot of stakeholders yeah. and all that. Yeah. What are the barriers in politics that we have to overcome? I, I, I think that it's pretty much the same as everywhere else. You have someone that is responsible for environment, and another person that is responsible for transport, and a fourth, third person that is responsible for finance. And what you have to prove is that when, uh, and that was like 10 years ago extremely difficult mm. uh, because no one believed that you could create better economy and jobs at the, and good environment at the same time. Uh, and I, I even started an international <laughs> organization with the where uh, Stockholm Environment Institute does the work. <laughs> uh, 
uh, on, on this and uh, new climate economy to prove that there is actually also you have get better finance, a better economy if you act responsible, responsible uh, from an environmental point of view. Mm. I mean, take the examples I mentioned. Uh, I, I'm almost at tears when I see regions that are responsible for local transport system and they use the public procurement and they use, end up with old-fashioned diesel buses that we know causes mm. bad health or even like six or seven thousand premature deaths in Sweden only. I mean, you can multiply with the whole of Europe and our common countries. And still, these uh, transport, these buses, and, and, and I've even seen old, old diesel buses standing, mm -hmm. working, just outside the heart clinic at, uh, at the regional hospitals. Mm -hmm. And so what you procure is not only transport, you procure patients. Yes. So multiple benefits, this will actually come back in the presentations yes. later win, on. Win-win-win situations. Win-win-win situations. I will actually ask Gun to give the gift to you because I'm disqualified. I call this a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a <laughs> ship, you know. I'm, I'm really disqualified <laughs> for this, this job. I, I realized yeah. when I said... You're on you know, I know, I saw that, and I, you know, I, I respect that. So, so once again, Mr. Sieg, thank you ever so much. A wonderful little ship thank comes you. to you sailing along, and, and impossible to, to actually sail it. Yes, and, and again. to all of you that doesn't, are not fortunate enough to, to get this card, take, try this summer to take a trip on the fantastic Yeah, we're going to actually say, yeah, as it you said, is, it is possible to do. It <laughs> is uh, marvelous. It's a memory for life. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.